Well, I've been back from my trip to Colombia for a few days. I'd never been there before, even though my wife is Colombian and we've been married for like 30 years. I'm gonna get in trouble for that. It was a fun trip, we saw a lot of stuff. I had originally planned to get a, a bass fishing guide, but uh, time ran out and I wasn't able to do it. But anyway, I wanna use one of their famous exports, not what you're thinking, actually delicious coffee. So I'm gonna make a coffee bean lure. It ought to be fun, stick around. The coffee is delicious. I've got one thing that I'm not sure about. This whole design is gonna be dependent on what I assume is gonna be floating coffee beans. I don't know for sure. I think they float, but let's try it. And there they are. Oh yeah, they float. So the plan is to encase the coffee beans in some clear resin and pour that into a mold. And I'm gonna use this old container. And the idea is to create a blank that I can then take to the lathe and shape. All right, the container's prepped. I cleaned it out on the inside. Now I really needed those coffee beans to float and float pretty well because I'm fully relying on the coffee beans for the buoyancy of the lure. But here's a little bit of a challenge. How do I get those coffee beans to stay down in the resin if they wanna float out? And the answer is gonna be this little steel mesh. And this way I can hold the mesh down on top of the coffee beans and then pour the resin through the mesh. And hopefully I don't add a bunch of bubbles doing that, but we'll see. It doesn't have to be perfect, it just needs to fit inside. All right, that looks like it's gonna fit. All right, so here's the next sort of engineering design challenge. This thing is 240 milliliters, but I know I'm gonna be taking up a ton of room with those beans. And now I need to estimate what percentage of the total volume is gonna be taken up by the beans. This way, I don't mix too much of this stuff. If the beans were round, uh, it actually wouldn't be a difficult uh, mathematical equation. But since they're kind of an odd shape, I'm just gonna have to guess. I'm gonna assume to start with that the beans are gonna take up about 60% of the volume. So 40% of 240 milliliters is about 96 milliliters. So we'll call it 100 milliliters. So I'll mix 50 milliliters of part A and part B. I almost forgot this stuff is by weight, not by volume. So I'm gonna weigh Part A, it's 75. Let's see what part B is. 89, so I'll take a little out of this. I wanna mix some sparkles into this because the Colombian flag is yellow, red, and blue. About half full. All right, that's gonna look like Mardi Gras. Or in this case, Carnival. All right, I heated this up and it's behaving a little more like fluid than it is like snot. So that's a good thing. Now I'm gonna pour part A, the thin stuff, into the thick stuff. This way there's a little less waste, a little less stuff stuck to the uh, cup. This is gonna take a little while. All right, that's got it. Hopefully that'll hold together. Okay, hopefully it's uh, thin enough to pour in between all those gaps. I don't have a whole lot of time. This thing only really has like around seven minutes of working time. So I'm hoping that it seeps in there pretty quickly. All right, I'm gonna have to drill a vent hole on the bottom. I know this sounds crazy, but I'll have to put a piece of tape over it. Otherwise, it's just gonna airlock on me. All right, I've got it in another cup and I'm letting it run out. It's really getting hot. So I'm just gonna let it continue to ooze in. The nice thing about working on top of glass is that this stuff will harden and I can just scrape it off with a razor blade. No harm done. 
All right, it's been like five or six hours. I left this thing all day. It's set up, I'm not sh I don't know what this is gonna look like when I open it up, but uh, I'm gonna go ahead and take it to the saw and cut out the little piece of metal mesh. Look at this thing, man, it looks like a sausage. Well, anyway, let's cut the casing off. Oh my God, that is, this is so bizarre looking. All right, let's see what happens when we try to uh, lay it down. I got a feeling this is gonna smell delicious and look kind of turd-like. <laughs> This smells delicious. A good way to tell if it's true is to set your tool on top and you can see it bouncing and hear it. And as you get to this end, it's a lot smoother. So I know this has got the wobble in over here. The tool gets hot and it kind of makes it smell like you're actually making coffee. It's so weird. All right, here's what it looks like, at least at this point. And you can see there's gonna be a lot of little holes and stuff, but I expected that, and we'll have to fill that with some uh, UV resin. Just hoping it holds together that there's enough resin and everything to uh, keep it from just exploding. This is totally experimental. Never done it before. beans actually sand much faster than the resin so uh, I have to be careful I'm not gonna get a perfectly smooth surface because the beans end up having like little divots what I'm gonna do before I take it off the lathe is I'm gonna cut my lip slot and I'll drill in the eye sockets and I'll use this clamp as my uh, guide for the back of the saw All right, that's got it. And now I can rotate it 90 degrees and drill my eye socket. All right, I'm gonna give it a little bit more of a sanding and then we'll cut it off. So it's a little frustrating not to get a really smooth surface, but you really can't. These beans just act weird. In keeping with the whole Columbia theme, I'm going to use this 1,000 peso coin as my bib for this thing. It's got a little turtle on it. So the reason I'm using this coin as a bib is not just to keep uh, the whole Columbia theme going, but I don't want to drill holes in this lure. I don't want to paint it at all. I just want to put a clear coat and that means I don't want to have to fill holes that I use to add weight. So that means I've got to find a different way to add weight. So and that's why I'm going to use a big fat coin for a bib. I've flattened out one surface and thinned it out just a little bit and you get a nice semi-round bib. All right, I've got the bib on, uh, the tie on eye, and the two hook eyes on. And this lure is looking like it's going to be the most unattractive lure I have ever made. Well, besides looking like a turd, it just is not a pretty lure. But I'm going to hold off on judgment until I have it in the water and see how, if it swims at all. <music> Alright, 
it's the next day, I'm still working on this. Besides not being very attractive, I realized the shape is very bulky and short. And if you'll remember this guy that I made as a deep diving saltwater lure, started off with a bad case of the porpoising until I actually ground down the back side of the uh, dive lip. And that improved it a lot. And the little crayfish lure that I made from a ball. And I made this from a ball because I wanted it to porpoise. I knew that that shape would make it porpoise. So I'm a little concerned that this sort of blunt shape is going to be a porpoising lure too. But eh, either way, we're going to learn a little something from it. And we'll definitely put it in the water and see what it does. In the meantime, I'm going through and I'm filling all the little tiny holes in the beans that are right on the surface with a tiny droplet of uh, UV resin and then setting it and then repeating the process and hopefully I'll get most of these divots filled. And with all those little repairs set, I've got to sand it all down because now it's just got a bunch of little bumps. I've smoothed it out pretty well, but I probably could uh, clean it up, give it a clear coat, sand it back down, fill the divots, and do it again. I could probably do that two or three times, but I don't really feel like it's gonna be worth it to me. So I'm gonna do my best to make it look halfway decent. And the other thing is, as I'm holding this thing in my hand, I'm thinking it's gonna sink. I haven't tried it yet. It doesn't really matter. This thing probably is not gonna get fished seriously, but we will take it to the water. We will get some underwater shots of this thing, no matter what. I think I'm gonna put a little bit of foil on here just to give it something that isn't turd brown. All right, so what I've done is I've punched out a couple of circles of this uh, foil. My idea is just to have a little bit of a faux gill plate here, uh, just off the eye. I don't know, I think that maybe enhanced it just a little bit. I think there's no doubt with the gold in this, the uh, coin that we need to go with a gold eye. All right, it's in the hands of the resin gods now. Let's see what we get in about an hour. All right, here we are on Lake Santa Fe, and I just pulled it out of the UV chamber and came straight out here. And before I show it to you, I just wanna say if you're enjoying this stuff, give me a thumbs up. And if you've watched a couple of the videos already, then certainly subscribe. I try to put out content that's fun to watch and is informational. Anyway, here it is. Check it out, I got a little bit of a confession. I did use a little paint on the uh, foil and I dressed up a treble in the colors of the flag as well. I tested it in my tank and it definitely sinks. All right, unfortunately, it looks like we got uh, some crappy visibility in this water, but it's probably better than mine. Oh, it looks like it actually swims. No, it's por porpoising. <laughs> yep, <laughs> you see it porpoising? I knew it. <laughs> that is so weird looking. All right, you know what? Let's let's see if it retrieves halfway straight. Certainly it'll cast a mile. It's not too bad. It's tending a little bit to the right, but you can really feel it pulsing. All right, let's get some underwater shot. middle of the day it's too hot to fish anyway and i really don't have the time but thanks for watching and we'll make something a little more mainstream on the next video i'll see you next friday